does this really irritating thing where the photo is what you're actually recording, like photo mode, but the video gives you a zoomed in thing. It makes no sense. But it is what it is. Hi, I'm Alana Phelan. I'm here to talk books. And the wig is not about the fact that I'm talking sci-fi this week, although I am. It's just because I'm mad at my hair. The tiara, though, is, and the makeup look, uh, is a little... It's really hard to see because of the way that the lighting is here. But uh, I actually um, was trying to go for the UK cover of Charlie Jane Anders' second Unstoppable book. I just learned that if you scratch one place on an itchy wig, it just makes everything itch. That is not helpful. Unstoppable is a three book series. The second book comes out April 5th, 2022. It is called Dreams Bigger Than Heartbreak. It is the sequel to Victories Greater Than Death. Now, being the person who does not like to spoil things, I'm gonna go back a little bit to <laughs> Victories Greater Than Death and tell you about that in case you haven't read it. It's the story of a girl who is uh, a clone of a space alien and she is taken up into space with her best friend and a bunch of other people from teenagers from around the world and they end up on this alien spaceship in the middle of this alien war and it's really cool and fun and I had a good time with it. I read it during the pandemic, so I maybe wasn't at my best. I definitely felt when I read it that it it was one of those books where I was like, oh, okay, this author is transitioning to YA. YA is not an easy genre to switch to. Uh, I, I write with someone, we did an adult book together, and then we did a YA together, and we had a lot of talks about like what that meant. And so like YA is, it has its all own, all of its own rules. Um, it, it's really interesting because it comes out of sort of a tradition of educating teens sort of, and it's very, it can be very sanitized and it has, it, it still has that. Like, you know, if, if you are, um, an adult writing for teens, then you are basically expected to f fade to black. Um, because God forbid, should a bunch of teenagers who are either having sexual feelings maybe, or, or acting on those sexual feelings, God forbid they like have books that reflect their actual experiences. Um, but, you know, but then who are these adults who would ever write that? Because that would be disgusting of them, right? So, like, so YA is, like, its own thing. And when I read it, I was like, oh, okay, Charlie Jane Anders, like, moved into YA. That's interesting. That's cool. There are things about this book that I really enjoy. Um, but there were things about it that felt like the the beginning was, like, really... I don't, I don't really know. There was something about the beginning where I was just like, I'm going to go with this, but I don't know like if I would have picked it up on my own if I didn't know who the author was. And then by the end, I was like, oh, this is really fun and like cinematic. And I think I kind of missed the point of the book because I was expecting something else from Charlie Jane Anders. I, I don't know. But the point is, is so I got the arc for the second book and I, I was like, okay, now I know what to expect. I'll be fine. And then the book freaking bashes me over the head by being a Charlie Jane Andrews book and a YA and exactly what I was expecting. Maybe not exactly what I was expecting, but what I, what I think I was like my soul was hoping for. This is me pushing my cat away. She's she's a needy girl. 
it has the space romp, but it also has this like, the things that I wanted Charlie Jane to impart to teenagers. The things that I love about her as a writer, as like a person, those things, she imbued this book with all of them. She, she figured, you know, she's got that style. She's, she's, she's learned how to YA, but it's, it's just, and then she's learned how to put herself into that. The best parts of her. I read in the meantime, you know, I've, I read, uh, her short story collection. I read her, her book, uh, her nonfiction book on writing, which is also a book about like getting through really hard times. Uh, a pandemic or you know uh, having a government that doesn't want you to exist really um and I just I think all of that all of that is in the second book um the community that there, there's a there's a sense of community in the second book that I think is different. There's a difference between community and found family. And I think that one of the themes throughout her writing has been community, not just found family. And I, I, I really truly believe that teenagers need this stuff desperately need it they desperately need to know about the things that will fulfill them outside of the people that are closest to them because if anything happens to those people either either they fight break up or or god forbid something else happens um they need to know how to have support structures beyond the people that they love and and not just that but they need to know how to interact with those structures they need to know how to fail within those structures they need to know how to watch those structures fail and they need to like kind of have their heart broken by some of those structures too I think and and to learn how to um be changed within those structures right I didn't really have that growing up. I didn't really want to be involved in anything. I didn't really want to join anything. And I think that we have these kids growing up who don't have as, they have a lot of opportunities to join things, but they don't really have as many opportunities to create things as they used to. And certainly not community. Um, I think that, that parents and I think that parents primarily um, shuffle kids. And I say this as someone who worked with kids, I think they get shuffled to a lot of things. And that's not power. They have no concepts of how to deal with power. They are literally just taken from place to place. They have no power of their own. And I think that that is the worst thing in the whole wide world that could happen to them is to not have any power of their own. Because it means that when it's time for them to do anything, they are so used to someone else doing it for them. And I don't just mean helicopter parents. I legitimately mean anything. It, it's not just about, like, how do I fill out a job application? It's literally, like, questions like what happens when, you know, what happens when my karaoke group decides that the leader doesn't want to be in charge anymore. There's... Yeah, I just, I, I think that that's what she brings to this book in particular is just 
this sort of sense of structures and teaching kids to like reach out beyond what is known to them and find their place within structures and create places for themselves in structures. And it's okay to be uncomfortable, which I think is very different from other YA. So I also read two books that I chose to read back to back, which are The Candy House by Jennifer Egan and Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. You know that I just looked it up to see that it was St. John and not St. John and Mandel and not Mandel or something. I'm just gonna have to do that with every author forever. Anyway. So I read them back to back on purpose because these two authors have been lauded for writing this literary sci-fi type dealie. Uh, a Visit from the Goon Squad came out ages ago um, when I was working my first library job and it was praised all over the place. I liked it. I liked it. It was fine. It was, it was good. I didn't understand why it was considered to be this like amazing thing, but um, I did not read the book in between. I read this one though, The Candy House. And then uh, I read Station Eleven, which I really enjoyed. Uh, again, did not understand why it was winning like all of these um, like awards, all this attention and so on and so forth. Like I, it's not that I don't think that these are very good books. It's just that I felt that there was this idea that somehow these books were better than other science fiction books because they dealt with the human condition and most science fiction books deal with the human condition somehow. I, I don't know what makes these ones stand out more except that I guess one had a little bit to do with Shakespeare and the other I don't remember actually. I just, there were like charts in A Visit to the Goon Squad. That's all I really remember. Um, and so I, I wanted to see what they were doing. I actually was really looking forward to Sea of Tranquility, but then I was, I read the description and it was like, oh, a guy plays a violin in like a certain year, but then like another, in another year, a guy can hear it and in another year there's a pandemic and that person can hear it. And I was just like, I don't know what's going on, but it could be good. And then uh, the candy house is something to do with like techno or house music and uh, memory and connected story. Okay, sure, okay. It's like some of the Goon Squad characters will be there. Well, I've completely forgotten what's in Goon Squad, so let's just jump right in, shall we? So I read Candy House first, and uh, it is a collection of stories where everyone is connected in some way. I needed a chart, and I had an arc, so if there was a chart somewhere, I certainly didn't have one. I was a little confused about, I kept getting two characters confused because their names started with L. Um, there was a part where uh, it seemed almost silly compared to the rest, but it was supposed to be taken very seriously. So, okay. Um, it's divided into sections and each one is like a different part of a song. It's like, oh, here's the drop or something. I don't understand. All I know is that it is broken up into sections and within those sections are all of these little vignettes of characters and some of them are depressing and some of them are depressing with like a little bit of your heart rising at the end. 
so not significantly different from the way that I remember a visit from the goon squad honestly um did I enjoy it yes I did I did I really did um I I, I like feelings in my sci-fi I didn't really feel like it was like super sci-fi ish though I mean there were, like I said there was a part that was like kind of silly oh mm. uh that was like sorry my bangs were like getting in my eyeball um but uh, you know there's some technology in it that's really interesting does it really like get into any big questions about it no I think you're supposed to be the one who sort of <sighs> there are so many little bits and pieces and some of them are quite good uh, about people's feelings that when it gets to the questions of like the ethical questions around memory you're almost like skimming the surface of the questions so because you're so wrapped up in the feelings around it the 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 family dramas the connections between people, the, the feelings of love, um, romantic, familial, uh, the oddness and the quirks and the, the dealing with siblings and, and parents and parents who weren't there and all these other things. And I am very impressed with, you know, um, there are ways that she goes into people's heads. Uh, she writes from the perspective of a teenage girl, which is really a really great, strong voice um, in one of the sections. But then there are times when she's writing in third person, which feels, I guess, more like what's supposed to be her, her writing. I am annoyed. I am annoyed because those are the parts that I don't like as much. I feel that when she is writing a first person and she is in the head of those people, I am enjoying myself far more than when she is writing from a third person perspective and um, she's doing like, uh, she's, she, I, it, it feels a little bit more um, self-conscious, not self-conscious, it's not that. I am more conscious of how she's using words and they are more literary, you know, she's using, she's using the top, uh, two of the top three um, most popular words that I have been seeing over and over again. And maybe they have always been there, but I'm just seeing them now and it's driving me up a wall. But she used the word juddering three times. And juddering is like the word that's annoying me because I feel like suddenly everybody like saw it and we're like, oh, that's a good word. So let's, let's use that. And like I said, maybe it's been there the whole time. But like the juddering count was three. Liminal was there one or two times. That's another word that I feel like I see in every book now. Um, and then she didn't use the, the third one. Um, but when she's, but her ability to switch those voices when she does it is great. And there were characters that I really cared about and there were characters that I was really interested in. And ultimately though, I didn't really feel like I was taken anywhere in the end if they were if things were supposed to come together I didn't feel like they did um and if they are supposed to be like a techno-y song shouldn't I feel like something you know has come together and risen and shouldn't I be something uplifted or shouldn't I be dancing I I'm not quite sure about the structure um at all I I don't understand it and so I moved on to Sea of Tranquility which I read in half the time uh, enjoyed so much more and of course see now I'm going to compare them because I'm afraid that coming out on the same day is going to make them be compared with each other and so here we go. Sea of Tranquility has a plot. It also has multiple perspectives. They go in a very um, cloud atlas sort of a way 
forward back sort of uh it is a time travel story it is tight as shit i loved it so much uh the the feeling that i had when i was reading um station 11 the the, the feeling that i couldn't grasp it enough um the 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 fact that I wanted more of a, a, a tighter story instead of that same feeling that I got from Visit, from the Goon Squad, from the Candy House. It is there. That book is tight, tight, so tight. Um, just so good. Um, and so I think that you know, you have these authors who are doing things that are supposed to be like experimental or whatever. And then you have these feelings in the human condition and literary, whatever. I think that there are people who have done things with structure and who... Cloud Atlas is is that book, right? Cloud Atlas is the book that goes... One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, or whatever it is, six, I don't remember, seven, for all I know it's eight. Um, I haven't read it in forever and I will never watch that movie again. It's terrible. But um it it, it felt there was such a reveal to that, which the candy house doesn't have. And there's so much plot going on in Sea of Tranquility. There's uh, another book that I would place in this is sort of maybe like The Time Traveler's Wife, um, Tell Me an Ending, which I just reviewed a little bit ago, which was wonderful too, uh, which was about memory. So you have all these books that are coming out, you know, around the same time. And, uh, and I mean, tell me an ending, not a great title, not a great cover, such a good book. And I'm afraid it's going to get lost in this. It's already on sale on Kindle this week. I hope it's still on sale and that you'll go get it. Please use my referral link, but you don't, you don't have to. Um, these books are all doing these things and I just, I, I guess when you're doing something experimental, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm not always the audience. I liked House of Leaves the first time I read it. I liked it the second time I read it. I hated it the third time I read it, but only because Johnny is such a jerk. He sits around waiting for some girl to like him because he's sitting there. What a jerk. But again, that's a book that played with structure a, a lot. Played with structure a lot. Um, and while it's annoying at times to get through at least it felt like it was doing something I don't know maybe the candy house brought things together for other people and it's just not doing it for me but it definitely didn't do it for me maybe I should have put my goggles up here instead of this this is this is a I don't think it's a spoiler exactly but um but maybe I should put my goggles up there, you know. But there's like no... I enjoyed the book. I do this every time. I sound like I'm so angry. I just, I don't understand. Like, what makes a book worthy of this... This high praise...
see you, Space Cowboy. Don't say that. Don't ever say that.